uh, in our two previous lessons in the Mary and Martha class, Denise Fink has, has given us such good background and historical insight to uh, the book of Isaiah, pointing out that the time span of the, of the book itself kind of suggests that there might have been more than one Isaiah or that a person wrote uh, with the um, ideas and beliefs of Isaiah. Um, it also says that King Hezekiah had a lot to do with, um, with the writings in Isaiah. How many of you know what a sword drill is? In young children's classes and in these <clears throat> classes, that's a, a practice to help you locate books in the Bible. And I always think about Hezekiah because when I was in the church and we did it, and there are actually commands like you're a soldier, you're standing there, you have your Bible in your hand, attention, draw swords. The sword is what? The word of God. And then they name a scripture verse. And when they say charge, <laughs> the first person to find it steps forward. Well, there was one time when we had a leader who was a pretty funny guy, and he said, attention, draw swords, Hezekiah 2.14. We started looking for a book that didn't exist. <laughs> he finally said, okay, uh, you're not going to find it, because we were obviously determined youth to find a book that didn't exist. Um, in the scripture today, we are reading um, from Isaiah, the 43rd verse, uh, 43, 48th chapter, third verse says, the former things I declared long ago, they went out from my mouth and I made it known. Then suddenly I did them and they came to pass because I know that you are obstinate and your neck is an iron sinew and your forehead brass, in other words, thick-headed. <laughs> Uh, hard-headed. I declared them to you a long ago before it came to pass. I announced them to you so that you would not say, my idol did them, my carved, carved image did them. This leads us right away to memory of when people should have been following. God was right there. He was telling them what to do, and yet things happened. In the, in the book of Exodus, we hear what Aaron did. Well, we hear what the people did. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, come, let's make us gods who will go before us. As for Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to them. Now, all of us know in the movie, Charlton Heston only stayed up there about 20 minutes. <laughs> but Moses was there 40 days. So you can understand that they were a little impatient, a little nervous. So he did. He said, take off your gold. And they formed it into a calf, uh, a golden calf. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because the people you have brought are corrupt. I have seen these people. He said to Moses, they are stiff necked people. Once again, that term of being stiff necked. One of the things that we do, I think, this day is that we have a hard time waiting. I know someone that if he's if you're behind him, if you're in front of him at the light and it turns green, you better be hitting the gas. Because <laughs> we would like to wait. <laughs> Where do we hear the term wait? <laughs> Where don't we hear? <laughs> Be patient and wait upon the Lord. Be patient and wait upon the Lord. It's interesting that in a waiting room, yeah. if you're at the doctor's office, you're the patients in the waiting room. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. <laughs> what are some other terms for that we use wait? Uh, Wait and see. Wait and see. Sometimes that's an answer we don't want to give. Wait till it's your turn. Wait your turn. <laughs> right. Couldn't it also mean trust? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, waiting means yeah. you're going to have to stay. 
Um, sometimes I will look at videos online and it will say, wait for it, which means don't turn them off, you know, watch all the ads, <laughs> wait for it. If you're looking forward to something, you often say, I can't wait. What are some other terms for wait? How often are we put on the phone and held there and a voice comes on and says, thank you for waiting patiently. <laughs> How do they know? <laughs> They're assuming a lot. <laughs> right, right. But we, we just hate to wait. We, uh, we are living in an age with our technology, especially with our children. And I, I have great sympathy for teachers now because uh, feedback, uh, reinforcement is immediate with games and things. There's no time to discuss. There's no time to, uh, to wait for your reward. Delay of gratification uh, is something that we don't know. What about, this is a word similar to, what does that word mean? <laughs> you really hate to see this if you go to the airport and you look at your flight and it says delay. That's that's one of the more serious delays. Um, we don't like to wait in lines, but you know, people stood in lines that were four and a half miles long when the queen passed away. They call them queues in Britain. But they waited in the queue. So I guess it just all depends on what you're waiting for, what that means to you. Many of us have, like I said, been classroom teachers and we just, we've kind of lost the art of discussion. We've lost the art of hearing other person's opinions because we just immediately want to take sides. You know, we, we, know, we know what we are looking for. The book of Matthew says that we are like the children of, of Israel, that we, we must follow the path. We should follow the journey, trust God in what he's saying. And they also say in the book of Matthew, lay not up for yourself treasures on earth. And if you were in some of those sword drills, you remember that. Where moth and rust death corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But... Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. For where your treasure is, there, your is there will your heart be also. Um, and in Isaiah, in the book, in 53, 6, he says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And that was a, a, a verse that I memorized. And I'm embarrassed to say how long it was before I realized what that meant. Because I, I memorized the words, we bring everyone to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. I didn't know who they were talking about many times. Thought, who, who are we turning to? And of course, Isaiah meant the promise of the Messiah. The iniquity of us all is laid on this perfect lamb. Besides waiting and, and delay of gratification, there is a, uh, a question today of, of what idols we have. We say, well, we don't worship idols. We're not taking off our gold jewelry and <clears throat> creating a calf. But, but do we have idols today? How, how do we have idols today? Sports heroes, celebrities sometimes. It's kind of, worshiping is, means anything that we put importance on that is excessive. It's too much. We even have a show called American Idol. <laughs> 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 I don't think we worship them, but yes, we kind of get the point. Um, what about technology? Do we depend on that a little bit, maybe more than we should? Some people worship their phones. Mm -hmm. Some people worship their phones. 
I was in San Antonio with some girlfriends a few years ago, and we were walking. And you know where we were walking. If you're if you're a tourist in San Antonio, you know what you're doing. Oh, we're going to the Alamo. <laughs> and one of my friends just stopped and she said, Oh no. And we thought she looked at her somewhere or you know, locked herself out of some. And she said, I don't have my Fitbit thing on. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we were kind of like, okay, sorry. <laughs> but, but someone said, Well, don't you have an app on your phone though? That's tracking your steps and all that. Well, yes, it does. But this other one would record another person's and they were in competition. And she was just, she's seriously broken up about um, things that we didn't consider. On the, on the Today Show earlier this week, they were talking about New Year's resolutions. They had some health guru on there. And they said, how do we sleep well? What do we do to sleep and tell a good night's sleep? And this lady said, the number one thing you can do to get a good night's sleep, turn your phone off and put it in another room. Studies have shown that so many people reach for their phone before they even reach to get out of bed. They said, turn your phone off. <laughs> well, and, and I'm bad about somebody talking about a, a person who in history or something like that. And one you know, fact of mine, I go to my phone because there's no reason for us to sit here and wonder when we can go by the way and find the answer. So we, we definitely do that. Um, the, uh, do you know, do we know what delay of gratification is and behavior modification? You know, you have something now or have something better if you wait for it. Um, we, that's a hard, hard lesson for our children these days to have. There is, however, a commercial about the progressive insurance where the guy is trying to get the homeowners not to become their parents. <laughs> and, and it's actually, it is actually a um, good example of delay of gratification. They're at the football stadium, can be seen them, and they all get out of the car. And the guy says, it's smart to park right here by the exit because when it's over, we just go out. So in other words, they're going to take the long walk into the stadium so that they can be the first out. That's that's delay of gratification. <laughs> it makes sense to them. So. Um, but we have trouble. We, we know very well that, that we are being led by Christ. If we will simply pray um, not to get what we want, although this delay of gratification, I have often prayed and given God a schedule. When I, was like, <laughs> I mean, it just made sense to me to go ahead and line everything up. And then, you know, then you understand that praying isn't make a wish or blow out the candles. It's help me for my will to be in line with yours. Help me that whatever happens, I can be grateful to you because I know you, you work all things for my good. Um, I admire people who keep journals um, and it's often suggested in that and you were talking about things to do for peace and all that. They'll often say, start journaling. Well, I don't have the discipline, quite frankly, to journal every day. But sometimes an experience, um, happens that is meaningful to me that I want to go and write it down. And I came across this the other day that I had written down, and this has got to be 10 years old. This morning I trespassed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. That's his wife no, calling. <laughs> this, morning, this morning I trespassed on my neighbor's property. The one where you can stand on the pier and see the sunrise. It was Paul Fisher's pier. <laughs> Gabriel and Grace, my dogs, were with me, and I was trying to be quiet since it was early. Now, a pier has three parts. The part that you walk on, it's got pilings into the ground. It's steady. It's got rails. It's, and then there's the ramp, and then there's the float. I was walking out, and the, the float, of course, moves with the water. 
Every now and then a boat that could have been launched in Davidson County or a strong wind that came down the main channel can cause the lapping waves to come ashore. One of these surprise waves came this morning when the two dogs and I were standing on the float. Even though they saw it coming, they clenched their paws into the deck. I was already backing up to the ranch to go to the stationary part, and I tried to get them to follow. They came within one step of where I was. Their foundation was rocking. Mine was steady. I reached to pull them toward me, just trying to get them to understand that if you'll take one step to where I am, you won't be so scared. You really don't know why a place that was safe before doesn't seem safe now. I'm trying to reason with my dogs out there. <laughs> there are two lessons that I took from that. The part of the pier that is firmly grounded is what God wants my faith to be like. Sadly, it's often like the floating parts of the pier that are so influenced by things around me. Just like I wanted my dogs not to be afraid, Jesus reaches out for me to just take one step toward him to a place where things are steady and secure. Following Christ, Israel, uh, the book of Isaiah told us that <coughs> all these promises, we have had the word of God, we have angels have visited, but we are a stiff-necked, hard-headed people. We don't like to wait, and if we don't see results pretty soon, we tend to think God is for, has forsaken us. We might not build a, an idol and fall down and worship it. But maybe we turn off a little of our communication at a time when it should really be turned on even more. And in the Mary and Martha class, I always ask, are there other comments? And there usually are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not have other peer stories? <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to wait on that one. <laughs> and these experience. <laughs> I have a lot of peer stories. <laughs> I have one where I was watching somebody ice skate and I was saying it's not a good idea. <laughs> 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 Other comments about why well, it's so hard to listen to God's word or so hard to, to trust and believe. We're impatient. We're so impatient. They give you an attention getter, only. Yeah. yeah, there are times when, yeah. when God kind of takes us by the shoulder and shakes us. You have to wait for it. We don't want we don't want to go to the restaurant. We want fast food. <laughs> we want microwave. And it's even worse for our children, I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's scary. There's an old thing of God's time is not our time. I remember that. I remember that. Oh, right. Are there other comments? There's another, and I love words to hymns. Mm -hmm. I like uh, trust and obey because there's no other way. Mm -hmm. Such a good hymn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They who wait on the Lord will mount up like eagles. Mm -hmm. And speaking, you know, about our idols mm -hmm. today, Bob Lewis once said, You can tell what a man places excessive importance on if you look at his calendar and his checkbook. <laughs> and it's true. When we look at our schedules, you know, what are we what are we giving time to? And you know, sometimes I don't do things that people are calling for help because it's just not convenient. And that's that's a sad confession. Other opinions, everybody's opinion is important. I don't know. I don't want that beautiful black. Um, beautiful black. Um. Jesus is coming back soon. Amen. <laughs> 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 
I like Isaiah 40. My grandfather was a Methodist minister, kept the Bible verse framed over his bed. Mm -hmm. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Mm -hmm. That's what I meant to say. I'm all good. Any <laughs> 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 other comments? I thank you for being here. I didn't expect to see <laughs> Carol. We've been Carol, waiting on you. Thank you for stepping up. Yeah. 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 yeah.